Hello everyone and welcome to the Sangamon River. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and today we're going after something a little bit strange. It's a member of the citrus family and of course many of you will be surprised to learn that there are citrus relatives here in temperate zones in North America. It's a cool little tree kind of verging on shrub and along the way we're going to see some interesting stuff. A lot of things you might encounter in these sorts of habitats. So come on, let's go in search of citrus. Hey, so can you guess which one of these plants is a relative of our culinary lettuce? Yeah, believe it or not, it's this behemoth right here. This is the Canada wild lettuce, and anyone who's had lettuce bolt in their garden will readily recognize the affinity. It is actually a member of the aster family, and although it's not blooming right now, the flowers do represent what you'd expect out of that group. They're composite, and they're yellow, and they're actually kind of attractive in their own way. Its affinity with the asters becomes more apparent when it finally decides to set seed. The little seeds are attached to these hairy parachutes and they get carried away on the slightest breeze. Now the original distribution of this plant is a bit obscured. It is native to eastern North America, but humans have really helped it along and it's been around us for a lot longer than we've been keeping records. Also, it is one tough cookie. It is equally at home living in upland rich soils, bottomland forests, floodplains, and even abandoned lots in cities. It's definitely one to keep your eye out for and at least be able to identify. And at younger stages, before it gets to this size, it's actually quite edible. So definitely one to keep on your radar. Now, of course, plants don't operate in a vacuum. There's a lot of really cool ecological interactions that go on in nature that have plants to thank. One of them is right here. This is an amazing spectacle to behold, and I highly recommend everyone check it out if they have the opportunity. These ants, I think they're a carpenter ant in the genus Campanotus, are farming tree hopper nymphs. Now, farming may seem like a really weird word to use, but that's essentially what's going on. Just as ranchers farm cattle, these guys are farming sap suckers. Now these nymphs are sap feeders. They're sitting on this giant ragweed and they're using their proboscis to suck sap out of the vascular tissue of the plant. Now sap is mostly water. It takes a lot of sap to get the nutrient rich sugars inside. So what they end up doing is pooping out a lot of the excess of what they can't handle. So these ants help these nymphs move around on the plant and suck up their feces as a food source. Now in return for this food, the ants are pretty aggressive about anything that might threaten this really easy food source for them. So if anyone were to make them angry just by brushing up against it, or if a hungry carnivore wants to come by and take a bite out of one of these nymphs, the ants are there as their protectors. It's an interesting mutualistic relationship and one you really should pay attention for. It's one you don't want to miss. Oh, whoa, the fruit of the Asajj orange. Now, the tree it came from is actually right above me, but this is a really interesting species. Now, when it was originally described, it was native to a very small portion of North America, but its fast growth rate and relatively spiny nature has seen it spread far and wide. It was largely used as a fence post tree because you could plant a lot of them and their spiny branches would actually keep cattle in and other things out. Now this falls under the category, or at least was hypothesized to be, a megafinal dispersal tree. These fruits are huge and this isn't even as big as they can get. And there's really nothing native to this continent right now that could effectively 
chew on, swallow, or eat any of this in any large degree. It's actually kind of toxic, so that the seeds inside are actually protected, for the most part, from things like squirrels and other rodents, although they do tear them apart. Now, it's likely that this may have involved in response to large mammals on the landscape. For example, the Pleistocene megafauna. This would be no trouble for a large mastodon or a mammoth. They could eat this without worrying about toxicity or choking on this gigantic fruit. Now, the fact that it performs incredibly well so far out of its discovered range suggests that it once had a much larger distribution, which feeds into this hypothesis pretty well. It's an interesting tree nonetheless, and these provide a lot of entertainment and uses for people all around North America. It's definitely one to keep your eye out for, and uh, let's be honest, it's really hard to miss. And here is the tree we've been looking for. This is the common hop tree, or wafer ash. Now it gets that name because it's got these trifoliate leaves and its seeds are packed into these wafer-like samaras. It's an interesting tree and its affinity with the citrus family isn't readily apparent. It actually took knowing a butterfly for me to figure out that this did in fact belong to that family. The larvae of the giant swallowtail feed only on members of this family. So wherever you see them, you know one of these plants or its relatives are nearby. Now this has a very patchy distribution throughout North America, but you can find it in large portions of the east. It's an interesting tree because it doesn't get very tall and it often throws up multiple stems, so it behaves more like a shrub. I'm really happy we found this tree today. It's an exciting find because it's always cool to see temperate members of mostly tropical families. I'm happy to share this with you today and I thank you for watching. Have a great week everyone.